Hello and welcome to The Update. I'm Heidi Tiltons. Protesters in Victoria and South Australia are still planning to mark the anniversary of the October 7 Hamas attacks with demonstrations on Monday. Premiers from both states have pleaded with organisers to abandon their demonstrations but admit they can't stop them, while pro-Palestinian organisers in Sydney have decided not to protest on Monday after police took them to the Supreme Court. The federal opposition is throwing its support behind the government's efforts to evacuate Australians from Lebanon, 500 seats have been secured on flights from Beirut to Cyprus on Saturday. Another 80 have been locked in for flights leaving today. Opposition leader Peter Dutton says people should get out while they can. I just encourage all Australians to listen to the advice of the Prime Minister on getting out uh, of Lebanon and doing it as quickly as possible. Uh, These calls have been going on for months. It was predictable that there was going to be the circumstance that uh, we see at the moment in Lebanon. As many as two million Aussies could soon be seeing extra money in their bank accounts. It's after an investigation by the corporate watchdog found Commonwealth and Westpac kept millions of low-income Aussies on high-fee accounts. ASIC ordering the banks to refund a total of $28 million to affected customers. Motoring groups are lifting the lid on Australia's petrol prices, revealing price cycles are lasting longer, with prices rising up to three times faster than they fall. The NRMA's Peter Curry says Canberra is the most expensive, but drivers right along the east coast are suffering. Uh, but for Brisbane, Melbourne and Sydney to then r- wrap out the second, third and fourth, with Brisbane coming in second, because of these longer cycles, overwhelmingly, uh, is a very worrying concern in the middle of a cost of living crisis and it's something that the NRMA thinks needs to be addressed. Consumer groups are welcoming a proposed crackdown on so-called shrinkflation. The federal government is considering tougher labelling rules and fines for manufacturers who make items smaller but sell them at the same price. Andrew Kelly from Choice says it's a practice that's becoming increasingly common. We identified 10 products that have been affected by shrinkflation. Uh, and uh, one of those products was a Coles and Woolworths store brand cereal, uh, which had shrunk by 65 grams. The price remains the same, so consumers ended up paying 14% more for that product. Freight workers will be almost $7,000 better off a year after striking a deal with Qantas. Staff who work at Australian Air Express, a subsidiary of the airline, will have their wages increased to match their colleagues at Qantas Freight. Rescuers in the US are working tirelessly to find hundreds of people still missing after Hurricane Helene made landfall, killing 180 people. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump have all visited the country's southeast, where communities have endured catastrophic damage. Sport and entertainment are next. In sport, Panthers and Storm players have come face-to-face for the final time before Sunday night's NRL Grand Final. Thousands of fans packed circular key to see their heroes, including newly crowned Dally M champion Jerome Hughes, the Melbourne number 7. GWS Giants veteran Lachlan Keefe has signed a new one-year deal for next season and Alyssa Healy has declared she'll lead Australia her way during the Women's T20 World Cup. Australia begins its campaign against Sri Lanka on Saturday night in the UAE. In entertainment news, Beyonce is apparently hopeful she'll pick up a Grammy in the country category after being snubbed at the CMAs and the People's Choice Country. Country Awards. The superstar's decision to submit Cowboy Carter in the country music category has already divided fans on social media. Beloved 1980s TV personality Fiona MacDonald has died at the age of 67. The host of children's show Wombat and It's a Knockout had been battling motor neuron disease since 2021. And Ellen has decided to ditch Botox and fillers. The 66-year-old star says she's going to embrace getting older and has stopped using cosmetic procedures on her face. And that's the latest from the Nova Podcast News team. We'll have another episode of The Update for you tomorrow.